Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. In this lesson number 124, we'll take a look at some of the challenges of distributed architecture. You can find Software Architecture Monday on my website, developer2architect.com, uh, by clicking on the Lessons link in the menu. Uh, this area of my website includes all of the lessons along with some reference links and a description of each of these. You can also watch the video embedded within my website or uh, display it in YouTube. Uh, most of the material uh, from my Software Architecture Monday lessons comes from two books that I recently wrote with Neil Ford, uh, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture and our latest book, Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. As a matter of fact, uh, this lesson in particular I created because our book, Software Archi the Architecture, The Hard Parts, uh, just recently got released. And so very excited about that. And I wanted to really talk about some of the challenges of distributed architecture and the fact that in this new book, we address all of these challenges. So you may remember way back at lesson 18, so that was several years ago, um, I did a lesson uh, outlining and talking about the fallacies of distributed computing. This is one of the things that actually makes distributed architecture so hard. However, I wanted to really expand on this and really talk about all the hard decisions and trade-offs that we need to make specifically within distributed architecture. And as a matter of fact, I wanna show you nine of those. Uh, the very first one that I usually end up uh, encountering on uh, client engagements is that of service granularity. How big should we make a service? How small should a service be? Uh, this is a very challenging part of distributed architecture. Again, something we uh, pretty much devote a chapter to each of these uh, challenges, I would say, within our book. But this is really the first uh, aspect uh, within distributed architecture that starts to become challenging. Uh, the second uh, challenge is that of shared functionality, shared code. Um, this is a natural part of software development, yet when we start to do highly distributed architectures, especially those like microservices, Unfortunately, we have to now start making decisions. How should we share that code? Should we use a shared service? Maybe a shared library? Should we just replicate the code? Uh, there's quite a few techniques to be able to share that functionality and not surprisingly, quite a few trade-offs associated with those options as well. Now, a third challenge of distributed architectures is that of workflow management. Uh, the choice between using orchestration, which you can see on the left-hand side here, and then also choreography. And so making these choices has different kinds of trade-offs, whether we're talking about getting better scalability and responsiveness with those that are like the choreography, or better control over our workflow and error handling, which is more in terms of orchestration, but this is yet another decision point and trade-offs that makes distributed architecture fairly challenging. Number four is that of communication protocols. Uh, the choice, for example, between synchronous calls, such as using REST, and asynchronous calls, such as using, for example, messaging. Which one should you use? Interestingly enough, this has a lot of trade-offs and implications in the choice of whether to do synchronous or asynchronous communication. But yet again, another choice we need to make within distributed architectures. Another kind of hidden challenge with distributed architectures is actually moving to distributed architectures. And that's all about the decomposition patterns that are available. Should you choose to do a component-based decomposition, which is on the left-hand side here, or to choose ch tactical forking, which is on the right-hand side. Each of these are two different kinds of techniques to decompose monolithic applications. Interesting, the one on the left-hand side, which is component-based decomposition, uh, is really a, an iterative, controlled way of, of effectively moving to a distributed architecture by really extracting out those pieces and parts that should be services. 
Whereas on tactical forking on the right hand side, uh, that's more like sculpting. This is a way instead of extraction, we chip away at the stuff we don't want through replicating the application. And it's interesting, each of these, we devote a chapter to this, by the way, um, in our book, but each of these have different kinds of trade-offs associated with them. You know, another challenge is that of contract management. Not only making the choice between strict and loose contracts, uh, but also the trade-offs involved, uh, the rate of change, how to accommodate change, versioning, deprecation strategies, communication strategies. There's a lot actually to contract management. Again, one of those challenging pieces of distributed architecture and making those choices. Another one is distributed transactions and transactional sagas. Now, I did do a lesson uh, quite some time ago about distributed transactions and sagas um, using the classic transactional saga pattern uh, that uh, Chris Richardson had actually evangelized in his Microservices Patterns book. However, in our book, we actually outline eight different types of transactional sagas. Uh, those involving three dimensions, whether it be a workflow, async or sync, and also whether it's atomic transactions or relying on eventual consistency. And we mold these three access points to show, mathematically of course, eight different kinds of topologies for a transactional saga. And of course, the trade-offs associated with each of those. Now, a lot of these challenges so far really have to do with functionality, but yet another challenge in distributed architecture is what sort of database style should I be using? Not all data is relational in nature. Should I be using a columnar database, a graph database, maybe a KV database? Maybe some things should be relational. And this is yet another choice that has trade-offs and implications on when we decide to choose a specific database style. And finally, and related to the database style, is kind of last challenge, which is, yeah, but what sort of architecture styles should we use? When we talk about distributed architecture, and there's five main types of architectures we can do, service-oriented, service-based, space-based, even event-driven architecture, and finally microservices. Which one's most appropriate? And can I use hybrid architectures? And the answer to that last question is absolutely. And in most cases, we do tend to use hybrid architectures in this choice of distributed architectures. But all nine of these are well, at least a, a good start in kind of describing some of the challenges when we look at distributed architecture outside of the traditional fallacies of distributed computing. And so this has been lesson number 124, some of the challenges of distributed architectures. This was really a short lesson. Of course, it would take days to go through all of those, but just to create awareness of some of the challenges that you do face. And also, uh, just to let everybody know, our Architecture the Hard Parts book now is officially out, and we do address all of these challenges in detail and more in that book. So I hope you uh, enjoy the book. Happy reading and stay tuned in two more Mondays for another lesson in software architecture.